The Airbus A350 vs Boeing 777, the efficient newcomer vs established long-range champion. Which is better? Before we find out, here are some background history. Boeing 777 first flew in 1994, and since then with its impressive performance comparable to quartz and twin engine efficiency became the standard for long-haul flights. In 2000 though, with improvement in engine technology, Boeing launched the second generation models, the Dash 300ER and 200LR. This gave Boeing a majority chunk of the large long-range wide-body market. Not wanting to lose the market, Airbus saw the need for a new large twin to succeed the A340. At the time, in 2004, Boeing launched their next generation 787, a smaller twin with more direct point-to-point -point routes in mind and higher level of efficiency, thanks to its carbon composite fuselage and wings. Eventually pushed by customer demands for an all-new white body, Airbus decided to launch one aircraft family to compete with both. The A350XWB Mark II was launched at the 2006 Farnborough Air Show. Airbus decided to position the Dash 800, which was never launched, as a 787 competitor, and the larger Dash 900 and 1000 were to go up against the established 777 while bringing 787 levels of technology and efficiency. So which is better? Before finding out if you're new here, a warm welcome and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more epic aviation content on the way. Performance The 777-200LR had the longest range of any twin den, carrying 317 passengers to class to an impressive 8,555 nautical miles, while the Dash 300ER was the largest twin jet carrying 396 to class to 7,370 nautical miles. The A350-900 carries around 325 passengers to class to 8,100 nautical miles, but a special ULR version with Dash 1000 fuel system, meaning a higher fuel capacity of 165,000 litres instead of the usual 141,000, can fly up to 9,700 nautical miles with 170 passengers. The A350-1000 with its new 319-ton MTOW can fly up to 8,700 nautical miles with 387 packs to class. So all in all, 777 models still stack up well in performance even against other all-new A350, though the A350 models do have more outright range. Engines 777's incredible performance at the time was enabled by the most powerful turbofan at the time, the GE90-115B. Thanks to carbon matrix composites allowing for a larger 128-inch fan, each produces up to 115,000 pounds on the 777. The A350's lighter weight means less thrust is needed, at 84,000 pounds for the Trent XWB84 powering the Dash 900, and 97,000 pounds for the Trent XWB97 powering the Dash 1000. A350 engine has been optimized for efficiency with around 10% low fuel burn than the 777 engine at power plant level. The main benefits of new carbon fibre wings and engines, as well as lighter systems, new avionics and new aerodynamics, is clearly seen in the advancement in fuel burn. A350-900 burns 6.03 kg per kilometre of fuel per trip, compared to 7.57 kg per kilometre per trip across a similar 5,000 or so nautical mile trip in a three-class layout. So it's around 21% more efficient than the Dash 200LR. The larger Dash 1000 is around 5% more efficient per seat still, burning 2.27 litres per 100 kilometres per pax, compared to around 2.91 litres per 100 kilometres per pax for the 777. Airbus markets around a 25% fuel burn improvement and in typical operations, it's very close. Cabin The A350 wins here as well. Boeing 777 featured the signature interior, which at the time was considered pretty average. With integrated overhead bins, curved cabin sidewalls, these gave a more spacious feel. Latter versions had optional mood lighting, as well as the latest Wi-Fi and IFE. However, it's a noisy cabin, with higher cabin altitude of well above 7,000 feet. Plus in economy, it has narrower seats at around 16.9 inches wide and 10 abreast. Still, the cabin crew liked its large galleys and lavatories. 
The 8450 has the airspace cabin, with the largest overhead bins, new LED mood lighting standard with optional welcome effect, new IFE, and the fastest Wi-Fi with underfloor cabling meaning a fully flat floor. It also has the quietest twin-engine cabin with the highest ceilings and wider 18-inch seats in the 9 abreast economy layout. So all in all, 8350 wins hands down. Advantages and disadvantages the 777 is now available at lower prices both in the new market as Boeing seeks to fill delivery slots to the 777X rollout as well as in the lease market. Its performance is on par with the 8350 and can fly most 8350 routes. Plus it's available in freighter guys, something the 8350 currently at least isn't, though that could change. It just shows how efficient and powerful it was back in the day, setting the standard and being the first white body twin to receive an extended ETOPS 180. However, it's less efficient and has higher maintenance cost with its more complex airframe. The A350 is more efficient with more outright range, plus the longest ETOPS of ETOPS 370 ever given to any white body twin. But it's more expensive with a huge backlog and long waiting times, meaning higher prices in the lease markets. Orders The second generation 777 models have sold 61 units for the Dash 200 at large and 838 for the Dash 300 ER. The A350-900 is more popular though, at 747 units sold, while the A350-1000 has only sold 168. So all in all, is the A350 the 777 of the future? Well, with its impressive performance, superior efficiency, more comfortable cabin, plus reliability already living up to 777 standards, it most certainly is and is well positioned to be the ideal 777 replacement for many legacy airlines going into the future. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more of these epic videos on the way. And of course, to meet next time, one team, one aviation, one sky ahead.